Good morning, everybody. The next 35 minutes uh, are going to be devoted to uh, Chrome OS uh, hardware back security and uh, verified boot. To remind you a little bit what we what was touched in the previous presentation, there are certain principles on which Chrome was built, and security is definitely one of them. The same applies to Chrome OS. There is no such uh, definitive source as uh, there is for Chrome, like Go Chrome, but there are a couple of those, and I look at both. And in both cases, we also have three to four principles that Chrome OS is built on. And for some reason, we've dropped stability uh, from what Chrome does. We added smartness, but security is there. So uh, apparently security is still an important feature of Chrome OS. And um, uh, basically in this talk, we're going to uh, dive a little bit deeper into how it is achieved. So a few disclaimers before we start. First, uh, it will mostly be uh, focused on the traditional uh, security aspects, uh, such as using cryptography for protecting user data and such. Uh, not on other features, which also contribute greatly to, to security, such as the ability to uh, auto-update uh, Chrome OS, reboot quickly, which, as you might guess, is very important for keeping users up to date uh, and fixing all the exploits quickly. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about mostly cryptography. And more than that, we're talking about how we use hardware to ensure the, the right level of security. And again, even though it is about cryptography, it is not a crypto 101. It is not information security 101. It is not a trusted platform audio 101. So there's, if you knew that, there are better experts. And like those are separate talks, which require much more than 30, 45 minutes. And uh, since we have this limited time uh, uh, span, this talk will be oversimplified. I'll try to be conceptually correct, but I will kind of skim over some details uh, because going into too much details will just overcomplicate things. Also, uh, there will be more talks today, at, yeah, today, uh, which will also touch on things like biometrics, which is also ways how hardware is used to provide security and do user authentication with Chrome OS. So if you're interested in that, uh, please listen to those talks as well. Uh, what Chrome OS uh, needs to do to provide an adequate level of security for its users. First off, it needs to make sure that whatever is booted on the device is a verified trusted image. Verified boot, which we'll touch on later, is the ability of Chrome OS devices to check that it only boots properly signed Chrome OS images, that it prevents running old images with known vulnerabilities, for example, and uh, with all that, that it provides recovery in the cases where, where like those preconditions are not met. Next thing, policy enforcements. So as it was just touched in the previous talk, Chromebooks are very popular in the educational um, space and among enterprises. So enforcing policies, such as, for example, preventing users going into a special development mode where they can run whatever on their devices, is an important feature of Chrome OS. So policy enforcement, is there and we need to somehow deal with that. Well, the next one is obvious is user authentication. So whenever a user uh, touches a Chromebook, we need to understand who they are and only give them access to their data. Also, we need to authenticate the user through uh, various means because currently the users are using Chromebooks on tablets, uh, which we're entering passwords is not very convenient. So we allow pins, we allow secure cards, we allow other methods of authentication and all that should be handled by Chrome OS system and user data protection. So obviously, uh, even if you lose your Chromebooks, you should be reasonably um, sure that your data cannot be stolen by uh, whoever finds this device. So even at rest, even, uh, even when the user is not there, the data should be protected and should be, uh, the Chrome OS should prevent attackers from uh, stealing your data if they somehow get access to your uh, hard drive or your device. Next thing is, uh, well, Besides the operating system itself with all those user authentication authorization uh, requirements, there are also applications which run on top and they have their own security needs. So they need to have some place where they can put, for example, their cryptography keys that they use to sign communications uh, with their servers or encrypt uh, communications with their servers. And they need to have a secure place to put all those keys in on the device. And again, Chrome OS provides this to them. And the last, probably not least uh, of the uh, features that I want to touch here is uh, remote attestation. Uh, the ability of Chrome OS to prove to remote servers what they're actually talking to a Chrome OS device, and they, more than that, a Chrome OS device 
of a specific identity, of like a specific Chrome OS device if it's important for them, Chrome OS of a specific type if it's important for them, and Chrome OS in a specific state, such as, for example, running a signed verified image if it is important for those services. So all this is remote attestation, and uh, that's like uh, the last feature that we're going to touch here. So how Chrome OS does it? Like, we're all here at Google. We know how, how Google does it, right? No. In our case, it's not machine learning. It's a hardware root of trust. And um, hardware root of trust is basically a separate hardware component sitting on the uh, device, which is separate from the main CPU, separate from the main memory, separate from disk and flash uh, available to the main CPU, which can encapsulate uh, secrets. It provides a non-volatile storage for those secrets, and which can uh, perform crypt operations in a way which is tied to this device, so they can only perform on this device, on this, on this module, and which can prove its identity to the rest of the operating to, to the rest of the system or to third part, uh, to uh, other um, uh, servers out there. And there is like an industry specification that defines that type of devices. Uh, it is the uh, trusted platform mo uh, module devices uh, defined by um, Trusted Computing Group. And uh, for many years, uh, Chromebooks contained uh, TPMs, Trusted pl Platform Module Devices. Um, um, sorry, Trusted Platform Modules, I guess. Um, and them to perform, to provide this uh, hardware root of trust um, um, capability and to root all the secrets uh, that uh, Chrome OS uses inside them. Recently, we've started doing even better. So uh, about two, maybe a little bit more years ago, yeah, two and a half years ago, uh, modern Chromebooks started uh, using uh, Google-specific chips for this purpose, um, where, which are currently known under the Titan name. They used to be known under, under H1 name. And this is a, um, a special security chip built by Google. Uh, which uh, also provides the hardware root of trust functionality. But compared to uh, third-party TPMs, we have certain advantages uh, that we can use for Chrome OS purposes. And like, they're obvious, because it's a Google-designed and Google-provided like, Google chip. It's, um, I have full control over the firmware that runs on those chips. Uh, it's actually open source. At least 99% of it is, is open source. So uh, we know what goes in there. Uh, we can quickly, well, we, we can prevent, uh, prevent any third-party exploits uh, to go uh, into there. We can, when we find bugs, we can make sure that the fixes are made quickly and efficiently. Uh, so that, like, uh, the same way if uh, issues are found in the Chrome OS in the next update to get them fixed, the same way if issues are found in, the, in this, uh, trust, in this uh, root of trust firmware on the next update, we'll get them fixed. And it also allows... Uh, uh, for extensibility. So even though for legacy reasons, uh, those chips started with providing a subset of trusted platform module uh, commands, uh, which can be sent for, by, by Chrome OS, nowadays they do more than that. So they also serve as a second factor authentication devices with a separate set of commands that they provide. They also provide uh, special capabilities for um, uh, users who need to log in with pins and, and at the same time, you need to make sure that nobody can just guess through all the, you know, uh, combinations of a uh, uh, five-digit pin and uh, log in there very quickly. So all those things were added on top of, uh, like, a limited subset of uh, TPM commands that uh, Chrome OS uses. So um, having said that, so I've said that, like, Chrome OS uh, root of trust is rooted in this, in this uh, hardware module which is true for many cases, but not for all of them. And you may see a couple of cases uh, uh, in the next of this presentation. Uh, I will not be able to, to talk about all the features that I listed before, but I will touch a few of them. Like, I'll start with verified boot. And this is the one to remind, again, when we want to boot only properly signed Chrome OS images, and we want to prevent rollback to uh, uh, images with known vulnerabilities. So it actually, from the hardware, uh, root of trust point of view, it uses a couple of uh, interesting uh, features provided by this hardware root of trust. Uh, one of them is uh, so-called platform configuration registers. And platform configuration register registers is actually a register, like you all know like what a register is, which stores data. But instead of, um, and it allows you to read this data, 
But instead of a write operation, it provides a special extend operation into there, which actually relies on using uh, uh, hashes like uh, SHA-256, SHA-512, SHA if you know um, cryptography basics, uh, which um, are, the important, part, uh, the important thing about them is they are like one-way functions. So if you know uh, the original data, it's very easy to calculate the result of applying this function of applying SHA. Um, a hash uh, to, to this data. But going back is, let's say, impossible. What you can do is, uh, with, with those platform configuration registers is uh, to extend it, which means you provide some value, and what it does, it takes the previous value stored in this register, takes uh, the value that you provided, combine them, and then calculates the hash of them and stores them back into this register. This way, if you know what operations were perform, what, what extend operations were performed, or you think you know what extend operations were performed, you can also you can always verify that you can by hand I mean by hand uh, outside of the hardware root of trust you can recalculate all those hashes. That's a simple operation. You can always do that, and then read the PCI register and compare what you calculated with what's stored there. This this way you will know that the list of operations that you think were performed is actually the list of operations that this hardware root of trust, the hardware security module saw. This uh, platform configuration register feature will be used by Verified Boot and by other features uh, um, uh, used by Chrome OS. Anyways, I think I will continue. Uh, the second feature is uh, non hotel RAM provided by uh, TPMs or security chips. So, as I said, like it provides us, uh, uh, the hardware root of trust provides us a way to store data on a separate hardware module in a way that can a certain only authorized access to this data. So uh, what it means is those chips provide region of memory, uh, non-volatile memory that somebody can store data in. And those who store data, they define special region spaces called there. And they provide special attributes for those spaces, which tell that only somebody who provides a certain password can read from this data. Or only if the device in a specific state, such as one of the PCR registers, in a uh, contains a certain value, you can read the data from there or write data from there. And more and more and more and more. Only once after reboot or only before you call a certain lock function and all that. So those environment spaces allow us to provide uh, an authorized access uh, to the data stored on the, on, on the TPM or security module chip. So, now let's uh, see what uh, Verified Boot actually does. So it, it, like, at a high level, it's, it's a pretty simple thing. There, is, uh, there are several uh, parts of the software and firmware that run uh, on, the, on the Chrome OS device. We start with the read-only firmware, which sits in the read-only uh, space and um, protected by a special write protect protection flag, which you can only get access either if you get the physical access to the device or through a hardware a root of trust or, or through a, a, a security chip. This read-only firmware then verifies uh, the read-write firmware, the read-write part of the firmware, and uh, it gets its image, it verifies its signature, it uh, uh, checks that the signature matches the key that it has, and only if it, uh, it matches, then it boots it. Read-write part of the firmware does the same with kernel. Kernel does this, the same with the root file system that it uh, uses. So, if this chain in in this chain, like every next every like previous stage verified the next stage, and only if all stages ver are verified, like we boot <laughs> all the way to the kernel and we run this operation system. Digging a little bit deeper, again, we don't have much time. So, uh, there is a special block in Flash that stores uh, the root key, which is used to verify the uh, read-write firmware. And uh, it is write protected, so nobody can override it without special access to the, to the device. The RO firmware gets this flag, then it decides on which of the uh, two versions. And we need to be able to update uh, the read-write uh, read part of the firmware in the field. Like with every auto-update which you get for your Chrome OS, you may get an auto-update for your uh, read-write part of the firmware as well. So it has two slots where those uh, RW parts are stored. It picks the one with the highest version, and it also checks if the version is not lower than the minimal version it accepts. It verifies the signature, it boots it. Same with the uh, OS image and um, 
kernel, there are two kernel partitions, uh, kernel A and kernel B. Uh, read write firmware checks which one is newer. Again, verifies that the uh, image version is higher than the, the like known good threshold that is provided somewhere uh, for this uh, for this RW firmware gets the root file system uh, for, for for the same kernel and boots that and so on and so forth. What it allows us to do is to have several modes in which um, uh, Chrome OS boots, and the tip, like the one where Chrome OS devices are most typically booted in is the verify the normal mode where all those stages are performed and uh, all those checks are performed. And if something doesn't check out, if for example, uh, the read-only firmware is not able to find the signed read-write firmware on the disk, it will not be able to boot it and it will go into recovery mode, which will allow you to recover the device from this unfortunate state. Same thing will happen if there are some um, hardware issues during the boot process. Now, in addition to that, we allow the users of Chromebooks to get a kind of a better access to their device. If they want to experiment, if they need to run something special, if they want to run a different operating system on this device, after all, it's their device, if it is their device, they can enter a special developer mode. It can allow you to boot a different image. Then set special flags in Flash that allow you to boot from USB in addition to that. Like how you do that? Well, you go to recovery mode. If you remember, if there is an error, if we are not able to uh, boot uh, a properly signed image, we go into recovery mode. You could also trigger go into recovery mode manually if you want to, if you need to recover or if you need to switch to boot in, in developer mode. And in this case, it's the read-only part of the firmware that recognizes this request to go into recovery, which will not boot a, a read-write uh, read um, uh, part of the firmware, but instead, will boot uh, the uh, specially signed recovery kernel images only. And those recovery images will be able to then update uh, the operating system image uh, running on your device. Why do we need a special mode for that? Because normally, if you remember um, what I uh, told about the use of the secure module, we have PCR registers and we have uh, NVRAM spaces. And NVRAM spaces are used to store those minimal threshold uh, versions of firmware and uh, Chrome OS kernel, which are allowed to boot on these devices. Those are, these are those anti-rollback features that, that we have. So if we know that versions up to a certain one uh, has an issue, it has uh, some known vulnerability, the key was uh, um, uh, vulnerable or something like that, we can set this threshold and will not be able to boot this version. And those versions are stored in, in TPM or secure uh, chip NVRAM. Um, and uh, before booting the read-write, like when RO boots read-write part of the firmware, it locks this NVRAM from overriding by, uh, uh, by any subsequent uh, uh, software that runs on this device. Same thing when read-write uh, read part of the firmware boots the kernel, it locks first the NVRAM space, which defines the kernel, uh, kernel version from um, being updated until the device is rebooted. So in the recovery mode, we don't lock those spaces. We'll let the recovery image, especially signed recovery image, to override them if needed. We uh, let the recovery image do, do other things on the device. We don't like lock the device from this image. And that allows you it to do certain things and allows it to restore it to a uh, good state. So uh, this is how it works. In addition to that, as a part of this whole process, uh, uh, the firmware sets the state in which it booted. Was it the recovery mode? Was it the development mode? Was it the uh, normal mode? Into one of the PCR registers that we talked about. And this way, the software that runs after that will be able to verify in which mode this device was booted. And this way, the software that runs after that will be able to protect their data uh, from uh, which they use, again, a hardware root of trust to store uh, from uh, being read in the wrong mode. For example, if they, if they have a key which they want to use uh, to, say, decrypt the user data only when devices boot in the normal mode, they can create this key on the TPM side and tie it to a specific value of this PCR0 register. And only if when they're in the verified in the normal mode, this key will, will work and will allow to decrypt user data. If we boot in the developer mode, no. This key will not work. You will not be able to decrypt. So, that's very, quick, uh, very quickly uh, what a verified boot is. Now, uh, the core of uh, Chrome OS security user authentication, data protection. 
Um, and again, uh, it's pretty simple in terms of what it needs to do. It needs to check user passwords or other forms of authentication and then uh, provide access to uh, the user data only if the right authentication was provided. Uh, how does it do it? So it encrypts user data and it encrypts it with user specific keys and like, I'll describe how exactly it does it uh, in a moment. It also encrypts certain system data. For example, uh, all the system logs are stored on a specially encrypted partition encrypted with a system level key uh, because those logs may include some of your PI data, data just by chance. It may include some IP addresses that you accessed. It may, it may include some other information that can be used to determine what you were doing on this device or, or what this device is. This way, we protect those system level data as well in case somebody grabs your Chromebook and that gets access to the disk. But user data is um, uh, also protected with, um, with user keys. And for that, we use uh, hardware bound keys. Basically, those are the keys which are stored inside the TPM, inside the security chip. Does anybody here know what cryptographic keys are and how they're used? Do we need any refreshers? Do we need any refreshers? Or can I? Okay, I, 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 I expect we, we can continue. So basically a crypto key is something that allows you, uh, th that uh, has two parts, private and public part, uh, if we are talking about the symmetric keys, and that's what we're talking about here. And um, uh, only a certain entity knows the private part and everybody else knows the public part. And that allows you to do two things depending on if you're talking about uh, signing keys or uh, decryption keys. Uh, like anybody with decryption keys, anybody using the public key can encrypt the data, but only the party that knows the private key then can decrypt this data. With signing, it's the opposite. Anybody who, um, um, I mean, uh, only the party that knows the private key can sign it, this data, meaning that it can attach uh, a signature to the data that it sends. Uh, like, um, uh, and the users of this data will be able to, anybody who has the public key will be able to verify the uh, validity, the authentic, uh, authenticity of this data by checking the signature and, and verifying that it matches what they can, uh, they, they, uh, they can see with the public key. So with uh, uh, hardware root of trust, we can put those keys into the separate hardware component, into secure module. So basically, we can ask a secure module to generate a new key pair consisting of private and public parts. At this point, it's stored only on this secure module. Nobody else can see it. Um, it just generated it and provided some handle to use it. Then we can ask it to sign with this key, for example. And again, this private key never leaves the, the hardware chip. Uh, you provide the data, you get back the signature. Or you can ask to decrypt it with this private part. Or you can ask it to get back the public part to you so you can provide it to other users who need to validate your signatures or who need to encrypt the data so you can decrypt it. So that's, in essence, what those keys are. And again, as with NVRAM spaces uh, in TPMs and secure chips, uh, those keys have attributes assigned to them, which allow you to provide certain requirements for who can use those keys. Only those who know the password, only in a specific device state, as I already mentioned above, and many more other uh, authentication policies are available uh, up there. But again, uh, we're not going into too many details here. So uh, how do we use those keys? For example, for user data, every home directory for user on Chrome OS is stored in an encrypted file on a file system. When a user logs in, this file is mounted as a partition, uh, as, a, as a home directory for this user. The key which is used to decrypt uh, this file uh, when mounting it is it's, it's a software key. Uh, and it's self-stored on disk in an encrypted format. The key to encrypt this key is uh, provided by the firmware and uh, by the user password. So let me go into a little bit more details. It will be more clear uh, from this point on. So let's say we have this encrypted user directory. Uh, when the user first logs in, it has an empty directory we created, and we create a random key which encrypts it. It's completely random. It's not tied to any TPM. It's not tied to anything. Then we use this key to encrypt the user data. Now we have the encrypted uh, user file, which we will be able to decrypt with, the, with this key. On this slide, you will see uh, this is the, uh, the vault key set is what we use to 
encrypt and decrypt the, uh, uh, the user uh, home directory. And uh, we use the vault key set key, VKK, in the second part, in, in the lower part of the slide, uh, to encrypt or decrypt this encrypted vault key set, uh, this vault key set, and store it in an encrypted form on, on disk. So we have this random key that uh, encrypts user data. Now we generate yet another key, uh, another random key, uh, which encrypts that key in turn. And then we send this key through a couple of operations. First, we send it through, uh, we encrypt it with a TPM key. So this hardware back key, uh, we encrypt that key with it and we get a new blob of data basically out of it. And then again, we encrypt it with a uh, user password, or actually something derived from user password. So when the user typed in their, types in their password, uh, we again, through a number of hashes and key derivation functions, uh, generate the key and again, in a deterministic way so that every time the user types this password, the same key will be generated out of that. And we use this key as a second stage to now encrypt the blob which came out of the TPM and then store this, uh, this file on disk, uh, this uh, blob on disk. So when the user logs in, they provide their password, this key is generated, we read the file, the encrypted vault key set key file from disk, we apply this uh, key to it, we get the value. We, we then send this blob uh, to a secure chip, decrypt with it, get another, uh, get another key, and then we apply that key to a file on disk where the vault key set uh, is stored, and this vault key set and then applied to the user uh, home directory. So that's uh, a rough idea how uh, encrypting user data uh, here works. What it allows us to do. Uh, first, it allows us to tie encrypting user data to this device. So only when you have access to this TPM, you will be able to decrypt uh, the blob that which came from the encrypted vault key set key. And it also allows you to tie it to user password. So only, only somebody who knows the user password will be able to send this key for, for this whole sequence and get the uh, mounted partition at the end. So this way, uh, if somebody steals your device, they will not be able to do it or if somebody copies your data to a different computer and then throws like machine power in order to cycle for all the possible passwords, they will not be able to do that because they will actually, it's not the password that they need to crack. They also need to crack the key which is uh, stored in the TPM, which is a much harder uh, thing to do. So uh, this is what we do. Of course, in reality, it is much more complex. And I will scheme over those things, I guess, uh, since we're running out of time. So. These are the three schemes which are used uh, in Chrome OS in reality. And they're more complicated because you need to worry about multiple things, including what if your TPM has a backdoor, including many other things. So we need to balance protection uh, from the TPM and with the TPM. Um, and um, just, uh, but basically it's, it's the same idea and I will not go through this, uh, through this list at the moment. So, why this complicated scheme? Why we have like those two levels? Like the second level is more or less uh, clear. So we need to protect both with the security chip and with the user password. But why do we need to generate the intermediate key and then encrypt it with, with another key? The reason is because we can have multiple authentication, multiple authorizations for the same user. It can be a password, can be a, a pin, and can be something else. This way, we generate a single key that encrypts a user directory, but we can have a multiple secondary keys which encrypt that key. And one of, uh, one of them can go through a password, one of them can go through some other form of, of authorization like a PIN that the user provides. And again, th those things that which I described here, those are just for password. For PINs, a different workflow is used. For smart cards, a different uh, workflow is used. But eventually they get to the same key, which is then applied to the user directory and allows to mount it. 